Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the moon, but very briefly today, we just got a little bit of station keeping to do, and uh, now that pretty much all of our junk is cleaned up, including a bunch of junk we didn't want to be cleaned up, uh, we can do a little bit of station keeping and uh, get this mission underway. So, very first thing we're going to do is get our two scientists out and get them working. Um, our scientific experiment rover uh, disappeared last episode. Uh, the general consensus is that it uh, spontaneously exploded, which apparently was audible on the episode. I just completely missed it. So, um, we need to decide what we're going to do about that. Uh, I could probably go back into a save file and edit it back into existence. Good job, John Oliver. I don't know why you felt the need to backflip off the ladder, but whatever works for you there, buddy. Or we can uh, send out a resupply with uh, new scientific instruments and a uh, new method of gathering information from biomes, which I think would be super interesting, however costly. Uh, I'm, I'm totally willing to do it. Also, our core is overheating and something is shutting down, but no clue as to what, so we're... We're just going to ignore it, because it, it hasn't exploded anything yet, although I probably should have turned off temperature something or others before loading this. I have a feeling that the uh, RTG thermal bug is uh, what cost us our rover. So there's that. Anyway, uh, probably speed a bunch of this up, because this is how long it actually takes to move around the moon, which is why I've been speeding a lot of things up for these episodes. So first step, we will waddle John Oliver over here to the laboratory proper and get him working on uh, what scientific data we have uh, already in store here. And for some reason, I had the briefest of inclinations that I had left some unstudied data here on the moon where I, I did not. We had loaded it all into the lander uh, last crew and took it all home with us. So there is no other data to research other than what is currently here in the lab. Uh, I will also try to empty out this last supply module that is uh, sitting here patiently parked and hopefully dispose of it before we bring down another one just to save the frame rate on things. But uh, it's not to be. There's just a, a little too much supply on board to uh, make that worthwhile. So I think we will probably have to get a uh, some means of gathering scientific information out here, uh, possibly ahead of the next resupply. But uh, here is Valentina making a impatient jump over to the habitation module. She is going to be dropping off uh, the RCS propellant and the tools she has no real use for before uh, climbing into her personal dormitory. And then we have Dimitri, who will... Uh, up here, magically on the ladder somehow that was uh, way far away from the hatch, and he also will get fed up with the uh, lunar waddle and just uh, jetpack his way over, and not to be outdone by Valentina, sticks the landing. And we'll get him in the lab and we'll get the both of them working on what data we have here, and then we will uh, be switching ourselves out to Harmonia Station in orbit of Mars. We do have to check in on this crew here. They have uh, almost a full load of science in the laboratory to uh, radio back to us, which is good. That's almost another 500 science. And then we're going to let the science point value there uh, drain down a little bit. It's at like 617, I believe, out of 750. And a lot of the experiments that we have left uh, are huge uh, data size, data wise anyway. So we need to let the lab empty out a little bit before we can transfer more stuff in there. And uh, then we'll just uh, transfer some of the life support from our uh, resupply guppy and uh, just get things topped off. We're nowhere near emptying that thing. That's like a couple of years worth of supplies uh, in that one module. So uh, really glad to have it on board and its part count is pretty low, but we will be using it as a disposal vessel for a bunch of stuff that we don't particularly need out here. Now the uh, next step, real quick, is to just run a uh, quick run-through of all of our uh, science experiments, just to make sure that we have fresh copies of all of this stuff. Uh, most of it we collected on our first run-through, but none of it was put through a lab. So some of these are biome-specific, some of them are not. But we're just going to 
collect all of them just to make sure. We'll radio in a few that we haven't collected prior, namely our imaging data and um, <laughs> mapping data, which is limited, but it's not going to give us credit for them anyway for reasons I don't particularly understand. Everything else seemed to work out just fine. And then it's time to start prepping for the next phase of this Mars mission. So I'll turn you over to old me for liver commentary. All right, Nina. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed these last uh, few weeks off duty, but uh, it is time to get back to work, unfortunately, and we have to prepare for the next phase of this mission. Um, luckily, it's pretty simple, though. Turn around, go up, inventory, equip. Oh, you still have two science experiment -y things there. That's cool. We'll need those later. Oh, come on, Nina. Seriously. What's in here? Oh, lots of useless stuff. That's cool. Um, is it worth, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Almost, almost worth it. Even in its extended position, that that works out pretty well. All right, and you, and you, perfect. Then, I missed that thing. Okay, we'll come back for it. And we'll try to get this around to our very lucky lander, which hopefully will remain very lucky. We should probably install uh, a matching set of solar panels. Might be a good idea, I think. Perhaps? I guess we'll find out. Well, at least you have uh, stable flying characteristics, even if you do just look like a flying crate. All right, let's get you on this ladder. Tether thyself. No, we don't have an actual ladder. Just uh, grab. Good job. All right, first thing, get this off your back so you can maneuver. And we'll go from here. Uh, what do we have here? Seismic accelerometer and the atmospheric doohickey thing. So we have a seismic. Didn't I just put a, yeah, that's a barometer. What were you? Barometer, don't need that. We do need Geiger Mueller tube. All right, let's just get this stuff built on, shall we? We shall, old me. So uh, if you can't tell, we are repurposing this lander and we're hopefully going to send uh, at least one Kerbal, maybe two, depending on life support constraints, uh, out to Phobos. And at the very least, get an orbit of it, but uh, the plan really is to land on it. The Delta P requirements to land on such a tiny moon are massively insignificant. And uh, considering the available Delta V of this little guy, I don't foresee that being much of a problem. Uh, there's just the issue of correcting the current shortcomings of this lander. Namely, that it uh, has no real method to land on it. 
but on such a low gravity environment, uh, there shouldn't be any real issue just touching it down on the bells or even setting it down on its side uh, intentionally this time. But uh, just in case, we will be installing some heftier RCS thrusters to uh, aid us not only in docking, but getting down. The other problem is, is with uh, two solar panels out of commission, it cannot generate enough power to uh, sustain itself. And it will absolutely need to do that if we are going to uh, attempt this mission. Uh, the other shortcoming is that we tore off all the antennas when we uh, were circularizing around Mars. And I would like for it to have independent comms just in case, but we will scrap two of these broken solar panels and get the other functional ones off. And the plan at this particular moment was to take two of the retractable massive solar panels uh, off of the uh, docking coupler to which the, the uh, I guess the resupply guppy is attached to, and uh, see if we can't repurpose two of them to fit on this lander. Um, a little bit difficult because they're just too big to fit in a crate, <laughs> and we can't really just push them around in uh, zero G. But uh, this is the part where I thought, oh, I'll just take a crate over there, place it down, we'll try to empty it out a little bit, but uh, let's see how big these are. Yeah, they're like 650 some odd, and I guess it's measured in liters. So they are entirely too big to fit inside the crate. So I would just attempt to grab one and attach it. Attaching it to the crate was a bad idea. It was magically propulsed out and is gone. We are probably never going to get that one again. This crate is entirely full, and not that it would matter. The size of them is such that even if the crates were entirely empty, we would in definitely not be able to uh, fit one on there. But uh, we actually have used the inventory space of the other crew members already. So for right now, she's just going to retreat back into the HAB module, and we're going to start uh, planning out how to approach this very interesting problem. But at least we can deploy that one solar panel that does work. Anyway, and now it's time to start refueling the lander because resource management is super important. And then we need to see exactly how much Delta V we're going to get from it. But uh, I will probably just go ahead and do that off camera. So that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.